What's up everyone, welcome back to IT Security Labs and today I'm very excited again to finish day 5 of the advent of cyber challenge from Dry Hack Me. This is 25 days leading to Christmas, we are learning a skill every single day. So thank you for joining me on this journey and on day 5 we're talking about cross-site scripting. First thing that we need to do as soon as we get to the challenge in Dry Hack Me is to click start machine so the machine can actually start. And once the machine starts, we need to go through this and read about cross-site scripting. And in a nutshell, cross-site scripting is a variability where an attacker can execute code on a website, say a JavaScript code, and then uh, that code can alter the behavior of the website. In this case, it can redirect the user to a different website. It can have pop-up that show up to the user you can make changes to the website depending on which type of cross-site scripting that you have in there as well. So for our story here, it looks like our app website has been hacked and someone went in there using cross-site scripting and added a plugin. So we need to make sure that we can go in, change the password, and then sign in as the attacker. So that's the goal here. There is another room on Try Hack Me that will show you what cross-site scripting is. I highly recommend you to go and complete this room as well. If you complete this room here, you also get even more understanding of cross-site scripting in addition to reading what's here. So once you start the machine, go ahead and you have a link that is going to be unique to you. Right-click and open that in a new tab. And once you open it in a new tab, you will get this website here. So this is the website that we're working on today, testing cross-site scripting. Here is the username and password. So we'll just use what we are given. And then of course the password is password. Then we sign in. We can see that we have the settings here. We can change the password. So let's do password one, two, three update the password and in the URL here you will notice that it actually says hey new password is goes to password one two two three this is a vulnerability here this should not be happening okay so we actually have a problem here so we can also test that it's actually vulnerable to cross-site scripting you can use what they have here or you can use your own uh, any payloads really to test like something from here that, that will work but let's use what we are given here Let's go to the L forum. Uh, we need to go to general. Here's a thread. Let's just paste what we are given here for cross-site scripting. Let's leave a comment. And as you can see, hello world does leave a link here. Let me see if I can try something that I've done before. So here's an alert that we can just try to use. Just try something. We can leave a comment. And here, sure enough, it actually pops up an alert that I put here. So this is just a simple alert that I used on Hack the Box on a cross-site scripting room. And we're popping up a pop-up. So the problem is, every time we refresh this, that pop-up is going to come up. So we just added that to the website. <laughs> All right, so this is definitely vulnerable to cross-site scripting. So next it says, um, using the URL you found earlier for changing the password, you can try the following payload. So we can add another payload to change the password to pass123 for anyone who executes or who visits that forum and refreshes this page here. So next time, if someone else signs in, we'll change the password. And of course, I have a pop-up that will also pop up for everyone who signs in. So... My pop-up is now a curse here because it's going to be popping up the whole time. But hey, that's the idea of, you know, uh, cross-site scripting, and we just did that right now. So once we do that, we can see in the page uh, source here that it actually is there. All right, so if we view this page source here, we can see, let me just search for, let's search for fetch. And you see that this is where we are actually setting it and it's saved on the website, so which is really good. So we now have that in place here. If anyone else visits that website, they are going to, the password is going to be changed. So in this case, that means that if the Grinch signs in, the password will be changed to pass123. 
if anyone uh, signs in and visits that page, not only are they going to do that, but they will also get a pop-up from me. So let's go ahead and sign in as the Grinch. Their password was changed automatically. So let's make sure that... All right, so I had to reset the machine. I think my pop-up was preventing the Grinch from actually signing in and interacting with this. So I'm going to do it again. This time, I just got a new IP address and I'm not going to put a pop-up because it looks like the Grinch wasn't able to, to log in. So I'm going to log in as our user because that pop-up needs to be acknowledged. And since this is automated, the Grinch's password was not able to change last time. So, and I'm just going to put our script to change the password. They say it takes a minute. So it's pass one, two, three, leave a comment. We need to wait for the Grinch to come back. If maybe we get lucky and it changed right away. They said here that it would take up to a minute for the Grinch to visit the page. But let's see. We know that it has to work. It was last time when I had a pop-up, it didn't work. So let's do it. Pass one, two, three, and we're able to log in. So that's that's a good part here. We're able to sign in as a Grinch. And they say that once logged in, go to the settings page, and this time you discover another feature that we need to disable. So let's go to settings. Here is the button that was added. We need to disable that, and we get our flag. So now we can go back and put our pop-up for everybody who's going to visit this after us. So submit the flag, and we're good. Just to make sure that we, are, we understand what we did here, we did cross-site scripting, and we used cross-site scripting to change any user's password who visited. We need to know their username though, so that's a big assumption. If you like this, please like, subscribe, make sure to follow along with me as I finish this challenge. So thank you for being here. If you have a chance, please do this room. I highly encourage you to do it because you see here the different types of cross-site scripting and also tasks that you can do to gain hands-on on, on cross-site scripting. So thanks very much. I'll see you next time.